Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea was in Canberra today, an historic address to the parliament, asserting that the relationship between the two countries was good and solid. Now, that's a welcome sign, but how reliant are we on his word? We know PNG needs foreign aid and the fact that China's made numerous advances to them. We all know about the corruption inside PNG too. I don't know, I think it's a precarious relationship still. To discuss it, I'm joined now by Michael Shoebridge, Director of Strategic Analysis Australia. I, I wanted to I listen to the speech today at lunchtime. I want to believe the Prime Minister, uh, the PNG Prime Minister, in, in his assurances. But is Beijing, Michael, really out of the equation? Well, Peter, I think you're right to stay concerned and focused because. It was a beautiful speech from Prime Minister Marape from PNG in the Australian Parliament and some emotional speeches in return. I think that's genuine. But really, when Australia works with PNG and we offer $200 million of policing and justice assistance, we have to deliver because Australia is only as good as our next game in PNG. It's not long ago we promised to electrify a lot of uh, the country and we've failed to deliver. So we've got to step up and deliver because China is always there and always ready to step in, and they would love their authoritarian police model to be adopted by PNG. And look, all credit to, to the Albanese government here. I was actually shocked at the start of the remarks today to find that this is the first time uh, we've had a national leader of a Pacific neighbour address our parliament. We've had Chinese leaders, for goodness sake, on multiple occasions. So I think that was well and truly overdue. Let's go down to this report in the Australian Financial Review today. This is about tensions between the Defence Minister, Richard Miles, and his department over funding. I spoke to Greg Sheridan last night. He was scathing. He said it's the worst set of ministerial arrangements he's seen in 40 years of journalism. And today in that report, one former defence official said, of course, off the record, that Miles and his department are having one thing in common. And he said that one thing is mutual non-performance. Give me your take. Well, I think that bottom line is right. Richard Miles is not in control of his ministry. He's like an absentee landlord. And uh, it looks like he thought commissioning a strategic review of big document, then tossing it over the fence to Russell Hill uh, meant they would change everything and do exactly what he wanted. Uh, he's been wrong. I think he's been naive and out of touch. And the defence leadership look like they've got to the point now where two years into the Labor government term, they're going to wait Richard Miles out. And the real problem is yeah. defence hasn't changed from 40 years of quiet, sleepy peace. It just hasn't got the memo and Miles hasn't been in control enough to make them get the memo. What about your comments today? Because you said our Defence Force needs to start putting away some of our gear, not burying it, not getting rid of it, uh, because our procurement timeframes have blown out. We're not getting the stuff we need. We better save some of the old stuff, you say, because things are going to get pretty dicey in the future. Well, Peter, this is just an example out of history. When you, when you get into a war, you lose your top shelf equipment and you can't replace it fast enough. So just like we're seeing the Russians and the Ukrainians do, you look for the older stuff you've stored. But Australia has this nasty habit of throwing away the stuff we retire or in the case of these pretty new Type N helicopters, 45 of them, cutting them up and burying them. So really, this is another example of being out of touch with our current security environment. We shouldn't have disposable disposal strategies for old stuff. We should have storage and mothballing strategies.